All right. This is my rendition of the Mouse Tower from the Moral Compass. In a time not really specified in Germany, there was a very rich man who lived there who had everything to see except for a heart. You see, he had the best crops in the whole city. All the wheat, corn, and bread you could imagine. It was like the entire city's source of food was contained in his property. So if anything ever happened, it wouldn't affect Mr. Hayden. One spring came, though, and the water started to overflow many of the people's crops, and all their food was starting to go bad. And they thought to themselves, hmm, no. Who is the only man in town who has all the food we could imagine? The only man who's guaranteed to still have good corn, bread, wheat, everything. Ah, Mr. Hato at the top of the hill. So they went to Mr. Hato, thinking maybe he would be generous. He'd help them out. And they knocked on his door. Yes, can I help you? <laughs> well, um, you see, the flood, it's, it's overflowing all of our crops, and we don't really have anything to eat. And we were wondering if you would be so kind as to, to help us out, and maybe for a small fee, we could buy some of your crops so we could eat. Ah, yes, you've come to eat my crops and consume them like rats. Well, I tell you, buy them now, for tomorrow my prices are higher. But you're the only one in town. We don't have anybody else to go to. Our food is destroyed. You're the only one. Ah, but I say, buy now, for tomorrow my prices are higher. So he was not very nice, to say the least. And he refused to give them the food that they wanted, unless they gave they paid him enormous amounts that were very unreasonable. So the days went by, and the people could not seem to raise the kind of money that they needed to buy the food from Mr. Hato. And they were, it was coming to the point of almost starvation. Soon, they brought up their children as well, and held their children up to the windows, and knocked on them. <laughs> Mr. Hato! Our children, even our children are starving. Are you going to let them die too? Come on, you have to give us something, please. He just sat inside of his house, listening to their cries. Didn't bother him. Like rodents. Didn't make a difference whether they lived or died. But the days went on, and they kept banging on his door, kept begging for food, and it wouldn't seem to go away. So finally... As he was sitting in his chair, he got very tired of hearing all their cries. So he got up, opened up his door. All right, all right. Okay. I'll tell you what. Tomorrow, your suffering shall all end. Meet me tomorrow in front of the barn over there. Then I will give you the food. But leave me alone for now. Come back tomorrow. So they did. They, they didn't think anything of it. Okay. We'll leave. And then come back tomorrow. Hoping to get some food. And he waited there by his barn. And just stood there as every last person began to file in. And no one was expecting what could have happened next. And as the last person entered into the barn, he grabbed the doors and bolted them shut. But once again, nobody inside had any idea at first what was about to happen. But he just laughed. <laughs> you pestered me like rats, now you shall all die. Then it was clear to them that there was no food. He was not going to give them anything, but that they would suffer inside this barn, possibly die unless they found a way out. And the days went by, the days kept going, the 
people were still stuck inside. Please! Mr. Hale, let us out! Please! You can't do this to us! We're human beings! And we just laugh inside his house and listen to them. You all pester me like rats and consume my food. Now they should all die. And eventually, they did. They all died in the barn. But with the kind of cold heart that he had, it didn't bother him. He went to bed that night, just as any other night. Then he told his servants to go in there and clean up the bones. But the servant went, tried to open up the barn, take out the bolts, opened up the doors, and lo and behold, there were no bones. The barnyard was as empty as a desert. And they woke up Mr. Hato from his sleep and told him, um, Mr. Hato, uh, we got a little problem here. You see, um, uh, the barn, there's no bones. They're all gone. But once again, being the man that he was, he thought nothing of it. He went on. The next morning came and he woke up where there was a beautiful, once a beautiful portrait of himself hanging on the wall. It was now on the floor. And right where the face of himself was in the portrait were marks of a rat's bite. So he got up, once again, thought nothing of it. Looked at it, a little disappointed, threw it away. Went downstairs, began to eat his breakfast looked across the table, and there was the little rat. Just looking at him with these eagerly hungry eyes. And then he got up and he thought it was a little strange. He got up, tried to go up the stairs, and there was rats on the stairs. He was stepping on them. And then he realized they were on the wall. And in his bed, they were everywhere. They were in his bath, in his drinks. In his cabinets, they were everywhere. He could not escape them. So he decided to go and buy him some cats to try and rid himself of this problem. But he bought tons of cats, thinking it would. The next day it came, woke up. The rats were still there. But there were no sign of cats. The cats were now gone. Now this is beginning to be a real problem. So one of his servants once again called up to the window. Mr. Hato! Uh, Mr. Hato! My buddy, get out of there now! There's rats! They're everywhere! They're coming towards you! Get out! So he looked out the window. And there again, the rats were coming all around him, coming towards the home. There was nothing he could do. So he ran down, grabbed a bunch of food, bread, cheese, and of course, his bags of money. Ran downstairs, got onto his horse, and galloped at full speed. Come on, come on, let's get out of here. Ran as fast as he could, crossed the river, and into the tower that he owned. Went to the tallest room in, in that tower. Looked out the window, and it was getting even worse. The rats were now as many as the grains of sand coming towards the tower. And then he grabbed all the food that he had and started throwing it out the window, hoping to delay them for some time. But this is not what the rats came for. So he closed all the windows, shut all the doors, put everything he could in front of every blockage, trying to stop them. And he got to the point where all he could do was wait in the corner. And soon he could start hearing them, biting on the walls and through the doors, coming through the floor. They were everywhere. There was nothing he could do. The weight was now. And a few days later, servants came back to see if the invasion of rats was gone. But it was. They went up to the tower and they found the cheese. 
bags of money, bread, even some holes in the floor and the walls that looked like rat whites. There was no sign of Mr. Hale. And that is my rendition of the mouse tower.